Okay, ready? <laughs> I'm gonna start laughing. It'll be the great, greatest intro and opener ever. Your story with Melinda Estabrooks, an exclusive presentation of Faith Strong Today. Well, welcome back to another show on Your Story with Melinda. And this is a very special show because it's all about friendship. And if I'm going to have a show about friendship, then I'm going to have to have one of my best girlfriends here with me co-hosting, Kimberly McLaren. She's back. You'll know her from the radio show, from you being on my show, talking about your own life and love and love lost and then redemption. I think we went on for hours. We went on for hours. And so she's going to be co-hosting with me. And I'm so excited to have from... North Metro Atlanta on Skype. Dawn Camp is Yay. here with us. Hi, Dawn. Hello. Dawn is, this is this is great. She, first of all, she is the editor of this great book called The Gift of Friendship. And a lot of the contributors in this book actually have been on my show. So Jessica mm-hmm. Turner, Holly Girth, and I'm really excited to have her on because we're gonna talk about, we're gonna talk about friendship, but she is a camera toting, homeschooling mama of Eight. Like, God bless you. Eight, Eight children. Yeah, wow. She's also a featured blogger on yeah. Encourage, which a lot of you know. And she's also uh, blogs at myhomesweethomeonline.net. And she does beautiful photography. Oh, mm. there goes my earbud <laughs> that has been seen everywhere. <laughs> this has been happening all the time. This is a real show, guys, a real show. There it goes. She lives in, like I said, North Metro Atlanta with her family. Dawn, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Yeah, well, let's start off first because the gift of friendship is something that I have, with friendships with women, have struggled with all my life. And I want to know just from you personally, why did you feel that you need to write this? What is it with you about friendship? Has it been a struggle with you? Or is it just something that you've realized, you know what, women need to know about this gift and how to get it? I think that women do need to know. It's really amazing. I think I've realized more since I've been blogging and involved with things online how many women have really been burned in friendships with other women. And they kind of guard themselves and they're afraid of it. And so I just think this book really speaks to people about how you can be very involved online, but how important face-to-face friendships are and online friendships too but that they're really good for us and we need them. And God created us to be relational beings and we can we can act out all those gifts that he gives us within friendship. And it's just important. And I think people need reminded of it. And maybe this will give you, give people some ideas of how best to maintain their friendships. Yeah. Have you struggled with friendships, women friendships in your life? Um, I feel like I'm the one who really, really tries to connect people and I'm very diplomatic. I'm a peacemaker. Um, and so mm-hmm. sometimes sometimes that's really good and it keeps friendships together. Sometimes it makes it where you're a, a little more likely to be the one who kind of gets run over or taken for granted. And mm-hmm. so, you know, I kind of watch, watch for that too. Um, there's some great stories in the book about people like that and then people that inspire me to do things a little differently too. Yeah. Why do you think... You know, and, and Kim, you can chat mm-hmm. into this too. Why do you think it's but it's it's hard for women to trust other women, to actually have deep friendships? Because it's taken me a while. In my 20s, I always just hung out with guys, I'll be honest. I always thought women were catty and judgmental and always jealous and right. competing with me. So I never wanted to have yeah. deep, you know, women friendships. Um, in my 30s, um, I realized that it, it was important. I needed them. Like, I actually needed them. But it was really hard for me to trust. Why do, you, why do you think that is about us? Maybe it's just the way we're wired. I think women look at things differently than men. But we do. We have, we have more words than they do. We need people to talk to. And I think we really need people that we can talk about what's going on in our lives. I think it's really, really important to make friends that are – healthy friendships that are going to support you and things like your marriage or mm-hmm. what you need to be doing. I think we can realize right away if we've got toxic friendships and maybe it's hard to break away, but it's healthy to realize that. Mm-hmm. Um, That's a hard one. And I've yeah. walked through that because you do need to, to learn that and see that. And yes. you know, and sometimes life is just, you have a lot of children. <laughs> I only have two, but you know how just life goes on and sometimes I can't 
or in the past, and this is where I can be bad, I, you just, you're, you're working and you've got the kids and, and everything else going on. And I really actually appreciate my friendships like Melinda that, gosh, we can go a few days or a week mm-hmm. without communicating. But the okay. minute we do, it's like yeah. we just spoke two minutes ago. And yeah. we just know each other well. Mm-hmm. And I love that. I've, it has been a, a learning process, you know, because uh, growing up too, the trusting thing is hard. I was yeah. I'm a preacher's kid, so you kind of always held everyone a little bit at arm's length because we knew we'd be moving all the time. We moved a lot. And um, so it's just kind of, I was always like, well, I'm not going to be here long enough. So this is great uh, for now. Yeah. But yeah, so just in my later years too, just I have some solid girls and some that live thousands of miles away from yeah. me, but they're the ones I call on when I need. Mm-hmm. It's well, hard. I think what it sounds like, you know, Dawn, Kimberly, it's, it's expectations. Like maybe right. that's what we need to discuss. How do you have healthy expectations on friendship? Because sometimes I've had friends where it was way too much. I couldn't, I couldn't deliver what they wanted yep. and disappointed them. Yes. And other times I had expectations on girlfriends, and when they didn't come through, I was really hurt. Mm-hmm. How do we do that well? Um, What Kimberly said about long-term relationships, that is really important. For instance, I have a friend here in Atlanta, and I moved clear across town from her about 11 years ago, and we now live 90-something miles apart. We used to live close, and I used to see her all the time, but I literally have seen her face-to-face fewer than 11 times in those 11 years. But when we have something big like a death in one of our families or my husband threw me a big surprise birthday party this year. She is there and we reconnect just like we've been seeing each other all the time. You know, we just pick up right where we were again. And so I think it's great what Kimberly said about those Mm long-term friendships. And I think it's great to have that expectation that you do have those kind of friends where you can just pick it right up again. Yeah, no, that's good. Let's go into your contents. Like, I love that you've got different... Um, titles and different things relating to, to friendship. But I want to pick up three and let's let's talk about them because mm-hmm. I think those are important. Number one, uh, one of the chapters of these different stories is building community. How do we do that, Dawn? Like I think for a lot of women it's like, you know, they could go to church or they could be part of clubs or or different, you know, school groups with their kids. But what does it really mean to build community and to be a part of that? Because, I, you know, I am really blessed that I have a really great community but you know what I found out, you know, from people writing me again on Facebook mm. and different things, a lot of women don't. And they don't know how to do it. They don't know how to build community. Right. And it's almost tiring before you even start. You're like, oh, I don't <laughs> want to share everything <laughs> again. Right? Yeah, I know. Like, so, so let's talk about that. How do we do that? Because I want to encourage, you know, women that are, are watching and listening to the show. How do we start that first step in building a real community of friendship? I think you have to be completely intentional about it. Yeah. I mean, you have to make time for it because things just aren't going to happen if you don't. Um, and you have to be willing to not sit there and wait for people to come to you because it might not happen yeah. that way. That's you might true. be the person who needs to schedule something. I had a friend, unfortunately, I was at the movies with my husband about to start. We couldn't do it, but I had a friend who messaged me the other night and just said, can you go to Starbucks like now? Like I need some time together. Mm -hmm. You have to be willing to be the one sometimes to reach out and and do that. Um, Yes. Well, and I think that's important because the hardest part for me was actually in building community, trusting them with my thoughts and my secrets and my angst and my issues. And that's terrifying because you don't know what they're going to do with it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You're like, here I go. Here are my pearls yeah. before you. And are you a pig? <laughs> no, I, mean, I don't mean to say that. But biblically speaking in scripture, it's like, <laughs> and it was yeah. scary. And, you know, I'll be honest. Some girlfriends held those pearls wisely and with great care. And there were some who didn't. Mm-hmm. Same. And right. there's a risk. And I think it's worth the risk, but it's terrifying because there is – the, the risk sometimes doesn't work out the way you want, right? Yeah. I mean, have you felt yeah. that? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. yeah. You know, I think there are times that maybe having some long-distance friends help with that, too, because I know, like you said, we have eight kids. Yeah. We've always got a lot going on. My mom told me one time she was worried that I had so many kids. She said, there's an old saying, you're only as happy as your least happy child. <laughs> and, and she was wiser than I was. Like, there's always mm-hmm. going to be something going on. And sometimes... 
it's hard to talk to people that are close by because you're trying to protect, you know, your child mm -hmm. or something like that. So it is helpful yeah. to have the long distance things too. But you know what you were talking about about um, having people and putting things before them and trusting them with it. Um, I had a week uh, about a month ago that I spent with. There were four of us, and we had taken our kids to camp, and the moms were staying in a condo together, and we had just good talking time every evening. And one of them, and she's one of my dearest friends, but she was telling us about something that had happened recently, and she got to the end of it, and I thought, you know, this was something really hard that she was going through, but she hadn't reached out and talked to everybody about mm -hmm. it, and so she was going through it alone. And mm -hmm. so I told my friends, I said, you know, I think we need to make a pact that maybe there are going to be things that come up and maybe it's something where we literally can't share all the details. Maybe they're not our details to share, mm -hmm. but we're carrying someone else's burden. And let's just say that even if we can't share all the details, that we will reach out and say, I really need, I really need you to pray for me. I really mm -hmm. need some girlfriend time. I really need to talk. And maybe I can't tell you everything that's going on. But let's just say we're not going to go through things alone yeah. because yeah. they've got each other. Yeah. yeah, I would agree. I think, I think that's key. There has to be an intentionality in building community. You actually have to put yourself out there. Like a lot of people have said, yes. well, you know, I want friends. And I'm like, well, and I guess this is the segue to the, another, you know, the next um, chapter. But it's like, but you have to be a friend too. You can't just sit there mm -hmm. and wait for people to come to you. you got to be actively right. involved to, to get out there. Like join a small group. Go be part of a, you know, walking, morning walking group with women or get involved because it's not just going to happen where people are just going to come and say, hey, you want to be a friend? Maybe, but not right. most of the time, you know? Right. Did, would you find that, Kim? Yeah. You know, as far as like yeah. you got to kind of get out there and, and, and build community, be intentional. You yeah, know? that's true. So I think, I think that's, that's a good learning for us. I think as we move into the next chapter, it says it takes a friend to be a friend. And I think that's another great chapter for women because, again, you can't just expect girlfriends to come and you're not, you know, reciprocating or being a friend too. Don, right. talk to us about that. Why is that one key for us to be reminded of? It, because it is so important to do that. I'll give you an example. There's a story that's the first one in that section, and it's by Kristen Strong, who's also an encouraged writer, and yeah. it's called The One Thing Every Good Friend Does. And she's talking about sitting down over coffee with a friend, and basically the friend has got something big going on in her life, and she just needs to take the time and talk about her, talk about what's going on. And it's the kind of thing where Kristen said, maybe it would be easy to feel jealous. Maybe it would be easy to cut in and contribute what she's going on, got going on. But she's talking about the value that sometimes to be a good friend, you just have to sit back and you have to let your friend shine. You have to let it be her moment and you have to support her and be 100% about her and being behind her. Um, I've got a good friend that um, I, I love it because when, I, when I've been looking at things like pursuing the books and things like that, she just looked at me one day. And I was, I was questioning it, like, oh, my goodness, can I do this? And I was worrying about it all. And she said, it's your time. Mm -hmm. And she just she says the most supportive things, and there's never any kind of jealousy. She's 100% behind me. And I think if we want to be a good friend and have good friends, we've got to be willing to do that. We've got to be able to put ourselves on the back shelf and totally support our friends, too. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Yeah, no, I was just, all that's going through my head is, and also you have to be able to wear your ugliest pair of pajamas <laughs> and sit on their couch and have your hair up and no makeup on and eat a bag of chips and yeah, and they yeah. still love you and yeah. nothing, like all the muffin top roll, like nothing matters. Yeah, you're not wearing Spanx. You're literally Nobody just letting is it go. comparing or judging. Because <laughs> I think there's too much of that, comparing and judging and as, Assumption. I think a lot of women make an yeah. assumption about other women and think, well, we just look at the outside and, yeah. and really, gosh, if we can just be real and get down to the nitty gritty and just go, oh, I'm just mm -hmm. as imperfect just, as I'm the imperfect. next. I'm imperfect. And I think and that's, yeah, I think that's a good one. And as you guys were saying, and Dawn, about, you know, not being jealous. Yeah. Because there is this yes. weird thing in women, oh, we're... 
you know, and I've had to learn this over the years. It's like, yeah, there are moments I'm like, wow, she looks much better in that dress than I do. And <laughs> she's, uh, and, you know, look at her life and all these kinds of things. And then as you get older, I think it just comes mm-hmm. with wisdom and maturity. You're like, oh, my goodness. It's exhausting it's, yeah. being yes. jealous and trying to yes. trying to one-up or do that. Like, you, we just have to be real. We all real. have our callings and our things and our yeah. times to shine, like you said. And we all have our stuff. Yeah, and so I think once you Everybody. get that, it's like, got it. Yeah. I don't need to compete. Yes. I just want to be, uh, and yes, I want to yes, be accepted yes. for who I am too, you know? Yeah. Right. And we're really guilty of thinking that in our friendships that we have to keep score, that yeah. um, that we can't be too needy. Like, I worried about that. I had, um, and actually the first story in the book is by Becky Keefe, who she's so sweet. I met her last week. I was very excited to meet her. But it's mm-hmm. called When Friendship is More Than Favors. And she talks about being in a position and a friendship where she felt like the needy one, like she needed all this help from her friend, all this stuff. And she's saying, okay, when I get through this part, like I owe you, I'm going to pay mm-hmm. you back. And her friendship's going. Her friend is saying, you know, friendship is more than favors. Like it's not about we're keeping score. Mm-hmm. And I have a friend, um, Last week where I was doing the same thing, I I needed her help on some things and I was feeling so bad and I finally, I texted and I said, I'm really sorry I'm so needy right now. And she said, whoa, you're not needy, don't worry about it. And she said, remember a few months ago when they had a death in her family and one of her children was sick and I was keeping her kids and taking one to the hospital to see the other and all this. And she said, you were totally there for me and that, you know, we're not keeping score. Yeah. And don't worry about feeling needy because that, that kind of thing shifts. There are going to be times where you're going to be the needy one in a friendship, and there are times when your friend is going to be, and that's okay. It's yeah. just a cycle. And, and I think just even, like, biblically, I mean, God created us to be in community, uh, for us to be in relationship. Mm-hmm. And I think when we realize that you can't do life alone, and we right. know this from yeah. the stories of Kim and I and, and going through – our marriages mm-hmm. and then, you know, d- devastating divorces, you mm-hmm. know, both yeah. of us, yeah. and then finding love again. I mean, it was our friendships with with women who mm-hmm. helped us get through those really, like, dark night of the souls, right? Yes. And and that's what I believe is is biblical, why God created us to be in relationship, because yeah. to, I can't imagine us going through that by ourselves. Oh, it no. would be no. horrific and horrible yeah. if that happened, but women who stuck by us... Yeah rubbed our back, sang songs for us, cheered us on, mm-hmm. loved us. That's mm-hmm. what got us through. And, I, and I'm and i so grateful for all the women in my life during those times. And so then you have them during the dark times, but then you can celebrate and go and sit on patios yes. and eat great meals <laughs> and the good times, right? Wish Which is what do. Kim and I are going to do after the show, Don. I wish you were up here because that's what we're going to do. Because <laughs> it's, you know, a good day. It's a good day. Um, but I think there is that part that, you know, Jesus surrounded himself with, you know, his friends and disciples. He didn't, you know, uh, he wasn't alone. And I think that's the same thing for us, that we need to model that to say we must have relationships to get through this life that can be great and also very, very hard and very difficult. Yes. Yes. You know? One of the sections, too, which I love is uh, the gift of friendship is, and we've talked about this, is vulnerability. How do we foster, Don, that? I mean, we talked about it, but how do we take that courageous first step to say, okay, here I am at a new church. I've just entered a small group. Um, I'm in a book club or I'm on an, even an online group, you know, that so many people are doing now. What's the first step for women who have been hurt or hardened or don't trust to, to take the step into vulnerability as far as then gaining, you know, great friendships and lifelong friendships? What would you say? I think it is a hard thing. I have, I think you just have to decide that you're going to do it, that you're going to allow yourself to be vulnerable to take that friendship to the next level. Because as long as we're putting up a mask and we're not really, really honest, the friendships are not going to get any deeper. And what you Mm -hmm. see is when people put on a mask, what they're usually trying to do is they're trying to hide their junk. They're trying Mm -hmm. to make it look like everything is okay and everything is great. And that doesn't, that doesn't invite people to Mm -hmm. open up and to go deeper because if you look at somebody and they look like they've got it all together and you know that you don't because none of us do, then that just makes it that much harder to open up and take it deeper. But usually Mm -hmm. most people have, you know, harder, more vulnerable things that they need to discuss. Mm -hmm. And if you're willing to take the chance 
and take that a little deeper and open it uh, and open up, then, well, you're going to find one of two things. You're going to find that it's not a person who will open up with you. And maybe you're going to realize that this is not a friendship that's going to go to that level. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you're going to find somebody who's going to be, you know, a closer friend, a deeper friend, and you can share those things because those things, those things can be hard. Um, Oh goodness. I wrote, I wrote, um, a story that's in the book that's called find a safe place, be a safe place. Mm -hmm. And I had, I had written something about that online on encourage a few years ago. And just talking about, um, if you had things that you needed to share vulnerable things, things to find someone you needed to talk to and to also be the kind of person that someone could talk to. And I actually had after that, I had, um, a young girl, a teenage girl who read the site, who emailed me and we emailed for a period of time. And she had some really hard situations in her life that she didn't feel like she could open up to anyone close by. And she, she decided to take me up on what I said about being a safe place for someone. And I was able to be that safe place for her for a while. And then she emailed me one day and said, Miss Dawn, don't worry, don't worry about me anymore. I'm okay. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no. I, and you've said this in the book, too, where friendships can be for different seasons or can be long-term. Yeah. And I, I felt that. I mean, yeah. Kim, I think you, too, in that, you know, there are times in a season I know that I had friends in high school or in my 20s that were really meant for that time. And some of them didn't go long-term. There's some that I've had for 12 years, 28 years, um, and some that were just for a season. And I think that's okay, right? I think that, that that's healthy, where you don't have to hold on to a friend forever. Mm-hmm. And there's other times where it's like God placed that girlfriend at that time to help you because they knew and were equipped to help you in that time. Right. And then you might not see them. And I think that's okay. I think we have to also be okay with that. Maybe we grieve it. Maybe we both agree to say that was a season and we go on. Mm-hmm. Would you say that too? Yeah, I've had the same thing. Um and it's been some of it has been hard though, yeah. Because I haven't understood it either. Yeah. But sometimes I think you just have to let things go, when yeah. you know, when clearly it's, a, it, it's moved on and forward and yeah. And I, I find that too. I've had to like let some friendships go yeah. and and then I've, and then yeah. God has given me new friendships, right, to kind of fill in right. that place too. And so. I have the thirty year. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Yeah, right. Aren't going anywhere. <laughs> I don't actually like saying I have 30 year friends. I know. You mean five year friends. How old am cause, I? Because we're only in our 20s, really. Right, Let's just right. be honest. Don, how has this book, book really inspired you? Like, mm-hmm. I, I, you, you were the editor and a cr- contributor, and you kind of came up with this idea and brought them all together. Um, how has this book helped you as you read the stories from, you know, Kristen Strong and Jessica Turner and Holly Girth and Liz Curtis Higgs and Lisa Turkers, like all these great women that, you know, we mm-hmm. read and watch. Like, how has this really inspired you and helped you on a personal level? I, I think it's been very interesting because it seems like that as I'm working on a book that whatever the area is that the book is on, that that's an area that becomes a struggle in my own life. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. So I literally I was I was having we we just had a situation where there were during while working on this book where some really core friendships in my life were put in a rough place and it was really hard and I actually write about that a little bit in the in the introduction to it. But I was I was reading the stories and it really they gave me ideas for how to rebuild the things that I was having trouble with. But also, it was kind of a wake-up call because, like I said, I had these areas where I was struggling in my own life, and I looked at my husband one day, and I said, I'm reading all these stories, and right now I feel like a friendship fraud. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not doing this. This isn't happening here. And it meant they, they gave me good tips but also made me aware of things I needed to work on in my own life. And I like the way, you know, the way they're in categories. Maybe you're going to have a season where there's a certain area that those ideas are more helpful. But, um, you know, there are times with long-term friendships, like you're saying, 30-year friendships or whatever, where you may hit a point where you and that friend may have a disagreement on a really serious thing. And that was sort of the area that came up, what happened to me while I was working on this. I had some good like my best friends where we had some areas 
where we weren't in agreement. And I had to say, is this about me winning or Mm -hmm. is this about my friendship? And am I going to preserve it and say, we agree to disagree, but the friendship is worth it. And that's what I'm going to preserve. Yeah, that's really good. That in, really good. One of my favorites here in Sarah Forgrave, she paraphrased the message in 1 Thessalonians 5.11. And it says, so speak encouraging words to one another, build up hope so you'll all be together in this. No one left out and no one left behind. Ha, love that. And it's a good reminder as far as friendship that it's all about encouraging one another, you know, in sort of this race and journey that we're in. And as much as sometimes I get frustrated, yeah. I think I have to kind of get back to center mm-hmm. and, and listen to the words of Jesus. He's like, you know, this is the point. We encourage each other in this race, in this life, helping one, one mm-hmm. another along. And a lot of times I have to put aside myself, right? My self-centered self uh, that right. wants so much more in other things and, and really focusing on, you know, how do I encourage her? Because when I encourage her, my girlfriend, she'll encourage me back. Yeah. You know, right. and, and that whole selflessness thing. Though I want to be... Selfish, though, Dawn. <laughs> I want to be selfish. And, and friendship is so about, no, actually, when you're selfless, the gift of friendship means it comes back to you because mm-hmm. then friends will be like, you know, yeah, I mean, she's been beside me and cheering me on, and, and I'm going to reciprocate and do the same. Mm-hmm. And that's encouraging, right? I, and I think these stories that are in here are so encouraging. Like, every woman needs to have this book, just on yeah. their shelf, you know, on their coffee table to remind us about it really friendship is really a gift yeah. and, and I can say that with you and I mm-hmm. Kim like you are such a gift to me as we've journeyed for six years what did you say on Facebook what oh was it? so fa- god bless <laughs> Facebook for reminding me today because I'm old and I can't remember anything that we they're like you've been friends with Melinda for six years today six congratulations years. I'm like oh thank you it's Facebook. our six-year anniversary <laughs> Well, look at that. Well, cheers to that. Spot. Dawn, up with your beautiful water bottle. We'll cheers together. <laughs> and now that you're one of our new friends in Atlanta, we've established a new friend, right, with you. So this yes. is this yes. is great. I yeah. love this. You know, one of the things is we, you know, sort of, I can't believe this conversation has, is almost <laughs> so coming to an fast. end. You say this, Dawn, which I think is powerful about friendship. You say this in your book. We need our people. We need friends standing in our corner, cheering us on, believing in us. We need listening ears, sharers of inside jokes, keepers of secrets. And we need those who laugh when we laugh, cry when we cry, and then pass the chips and salsa. Right? We need someone to look us in the eye and say, you're my favorite. And it's a little, it gets me a little emotional. And um, gives me chills. (laughs) Because imagine if all of us women... Mm. Believe this, did this, imagine that there wouldn't be lonely women. Because I know some of you listening and watching are lonely and you need friends. And then there's some women who are like, we need a little check again about what kind of friend I am. And am I being vulnerable? And we need this. You know, we need someone to look us in the eye and say, you're my favorite. And imagine if we committed as women to be those women. That we look at other women and say, you're my favorite. And they say back, you're my favorite. And I'm like, no, 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 you're my favorite. (laughs) We have arguments about being favorites. Um, (laughs) You know, what a gift, Dawn. I mean, any last thoughts before we go, just as encouraging women, because, you know, for Kim and I, I think it's a good reminder today for us. And I think for those listening all over the world, I think it's a good reminder. Any last thoughts that you might want to say just to encourage women around the world? You know, I think what I would say is to just, don't be afraid to be yourself yeah. in those friendships. Think about somebody you know that you're totally comfortable with being yourself and then and how that feels and how you act. And then when you go out with other people where maybe you're tempted to put that mask up, just mm-hmm. say, no, I know who I am and I'm going to be true. myself with this friend. And then it's a real friendship and they know me and I can know them. Beautiful. Yeah. Dawn Camp, where can we get your book? This beautiful book called The Gift of Friendship. You're the editor of lots of great stories. Where can we pick this book up? Um, it's at Barnes & Noble in stores. It's on Amazon. Hopefully it's at your Christian bookstore. Yeah. And it's a it's a great gift for a friend. Ah, uh, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it was a pleasure. It was yes. a pleasure having you here, joining our friendship so circle. Kim, like yeah, always, so I good to have it. you here. Thanks again, Dawn, and uh, thanks for your gift of words and, and putting this together to form this beautiful book called The Gift of Friendship. It's a great reminder for us, and thank you for now being our new friend. Yes. Yeah. <laughs>
you. All right. It. Thank you. Thanks so much. Your Story with Melinda Estabrooks. Listen for new episodes every Monday and subscribe to the podcast at faithstrongtoday.com.